Hello, everyone, and welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. I'm here with the writer-director of The New Cinderella, which is out September 3rd on Amazon. She also wrote all of the Pitch Perfect movies. She directed Blockers. She wrote on 30 Rock. Kay Cannon, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm so excited. to talk. pandemic great. I'm doing pandemic great. Right, right, right. It's always a caveat. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm so excited to talk to you. I've been a fan of your writing, of your directing. My boyfriend and I had just rewatched Blockers, and I think it's like one of the best comedies of the past 10, 20 years. It's so good. And if anyone hasn't seen it, they need to immediately go watch it. That is so nice of you to say. I happened to I catch it like I'm just like a couple months ago now, and it was on E. Um, Movies we well, love. Yeah, yeah. And and I was it was so funny to me because there's so much cussing in the moving that like how they changed it to make it all work for, um, you know, regular mainstream broadcast or whatever. It was so funny. When I watch sex in the city on E it's like, they, they really have to remove like full storylines. Like there's no Samantha character on E there's nothing. (laughs) There's no, there's no talk of any of the things she was really going through. Okay. Do you have a favorite product project of all the things you've worked on? Like, is there something you stumble upon that you like can't help, but watch. Um, I like, it's so funny. Cause like once it's so much, every project is so much a part of my world. And then when it's out, I like, can't watch it for years and years and years, but I definitely like pitch perfect. It was the first thing I did that was really, um, you know, like my own and, um, and it was my first screenplay. And so th- that always holds a special place in my heart. Right. Right. Uh, are you excited about Cinderella coming out? Are you nervous? How are you yeah. feeling? It's so close. I am all the feelings, all the vibes, because it's, um, you know, I, I'm, I really love the movie. I'm proud of the movie. I can't wait for people to see it. I feel like it's joyful. And at the same time, you hope what you did translates, <laughs> you know, like you hope that people feel how you ho- hope they'll feel, you know? Okay. Look, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I was putting it on and I was kind of skeptical. I thought, I don't, we don't need another Cinderella. I was like, I grew up with the Brandy and Whitney Houston version that holds a special place in my heart. So I put it on really in that mindset. And then I w- within like a couple of minutes, I was so charmed by it. And I thought it was just such a lovely, fun movie that weirdly is perfect for what we all need right now, which is just some, some laughs and some joy and music. I loved it. Um- Good. Oh, that, I'm so happy to hear that. And I, you know, I had the same reservations in making it that you had in watching it. <laughs> you know, I was like, I, there's been so many Cinderella's. I too, the Brandy Whitney Houston is my favorite Cinderella of all time. I also really love Ever After, which is like uh, Drew, Drew Barrymore. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so I have a lot of respect for them. And, um, you know, I just wanted to try my hand at it and try it something, you know, different, not necessarily better, but just different. And, um, and hopefully I'm glad to, to hear that you're saying that like it's, it sort of speaks to what's happening now in the world. It did. I needed it. I, it can't, I watched it at a time where I like just really needed some brightness. And so it was, <laughs> it was great. Um, we're going to get back to Cinderella, but I do have to talk to you about housewives. I know you're a big housewives fan as yeah. am I, uh, Beverly Hills, you're watching it right now, right? Yeah. What do you think bamboozle Jane is guilty? Is does she did she know any of this stuff that the husband was doing? Like, where do you stand? I mean, just before answering that question, can we just talk about like how all of the Housewives franchises, just in a time of the pandemic and Black Lives Matter, it's just like it's what all these <laughs> Housewives shows needed, and to see how each franchise handles these different problems, and like it's been it's been a really interesting thing to watch in the last year. Um, but for, yeah. and for Beverly Hills, it's like, I don't know how you feel about this, but I just, Beverly Hills is just like, their wealth is just feels so much higher and more than the other franchises. Like when they go shopping, it's like they go shopping, you know, <laughs> they buy things that are really expensive on camera, you yeah. know? So, um, so with the, like I I've, I've been shocked watching it for a, a whole bunch of reasons but but like when Kathy Hilton was like I bought this thing I didn't know I owned it you know like that <laughs> to have that amount of wealth and for Erica to be like I have a house I've never been to I don't even know where it is like you know that's a kind of wealth that like I don't understand you know yeah. and um yeah. that's pretty eye opening I watched the documentary 
uh, or that show about the Tom and Erica. <laughs> Whatever that was on Hulu with yeah. Danielle's job. We all watched it. Yeah. It was very damning. Um, and I don't know, but Danny, I feel like, I feel like I, I, I feel that ignorance is not an excuse. I think. Yeah. Sutton said that, you know, yeah. you mentioned the wealth thing too. And this week on the show, we saw Kathy Hilton with like food on TV trays. And I found it so hilarious because Kathy is so wealthy. And I was thinking like, if Sonia on the real houses in New York pulled out a TV tray, it wouldn't, we would just sort of expect it. It wouldn't be funny or ironic or anything, but there was something about Kathy with the TV tray because she is so wealthy knowing that she just likes to serve food that way was endearing (laughs) and wonderful. I mean, Kathy really shows herself honestly. And also like, is one of those people that, that it, I mean, she's a, she's a real human being. I mean, she reminds you of like, because she is a, a human person who has feelings and empathy and emotions. Like, I, I don't know. I think this is true, but she had to leave the table. Cause she didn't understand the extent of the crime, alleged crimes. Uh, right. And so when she heard that it was like money taken away from orphans and burn victims, she had to leave the table to cry. Wait, I didn't hear this. Is this true? I, did, I didn't hear this. How did I not hear that? I don't, I, maybe I don't, I, I don't know where I heard it, but I believe it. <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> yeah. That's the um, mantra because, of Housewives fans, right? right? We don't yeah. know where we heard it, but we believe it. But like, you know, when Kyle was like talking to Kathy about um, feeling like a bad mom and Kyle's being so open and vulnerable. And then Kathy gets up and goes, oh, you're so good. And like holds her, you know, it's like, it's like, yes, Kathy is from all this wealth, crazy amount of wealth, lived in a hotel, has been served her whole life. But she also, I I think she also like grew up the oldest of these three daughters where it was a struggle too, right? Like her her mother had had to really struggle. So she's like this nice combination of of realness. And then also what we enjoy watching with really wealthy people. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And I'm kind of happier with with her just on the sidelines. I don't think I need her in a more official capacity. Like I like the amount that we're getting and I feel like too much of a good thing might be bad for us. I agree. I think she's like, you know, she's like Norm from Cheers. Like you just want, like you're always going to want her to walk in and for everybody to be like, Kathy, we're so happy to Kathy. Uh, Okay. When you were working on 30 Rock, there were always these housewives things. And I wonder who who's was the brainchild of like the housewives parody where we saw Sherry Shepard, which by the way, it was rumored this week. It's not true. I don't think, but there was a rumor this week about Sherry Shepard joining New York housewives. Yeah, and yeah. Of course, all I could think about was her yelling ham on 30 rock in that <laughs> housewives parody, but whose brainchild was that? Were there a bunch of people on staff who watched housewives? Yeah. I mean, it's, it was so long ago, but I was definitely like someone who never missed an episode of any of it. And then, um, Tina was really aware of, of them um, uh, in, in a more than aware, but like, you know, like, like was assessing what was happening there. And then Tracy Wigfield, I remember being a huge fan. And of course she wrote the episode where we did the, um, the uh, housewives uh, with Sherry Shepard. And so, yeah, there was a lot of talking about them. I love that. I yes. love that. And there was also a Denise Richards moment before she was a housewife. She's singing a song like Countess Lynn. Like it's all. It's so, yeah. And she came in, she was so good. I remember her thinking like, oh, she's so good at this. It's like she was in the pocket for like acting like a housewife and singing the song. And like, I thought it was the funniest I'd ever seen her. Not that at the time Denise had been offered a bunch of comedy roles, but like she was really committed and knew what to do. And then of course, all these years later, like you see her actually be a housewife. Wild. And she had a weird, she had a splash. And I miss Denise or Denise Richards. You know, speaking of comedy, I loved her in Drop Dead Gorgeous. Like that's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I always wanted Denise to lean into more comedy because she's funny. She's so funny. And um, she was really sweet. I I almost did a, um, I had written this like short um, about this like gynecologist to the stars (laughs) and, uh, and uh, I actually f- ended up filming it. This is a long time ago with Casey Wilson as the person I was, I was the doctor and Casey Wilson was like the patient who came in. Um, but I had originally gone to Denise and like met with her to do, you know, t- to talk about this. And it was like it, a, kind of a hybrid of like Denise would be playing Denise and, 
Uh, I would get as her doctor, I'd get to ask her all these questions and do bits and jokes about what was happening in her real life and stuff like that. And, and so we were, we were going to do that together. And then I think she smartly pulled out of doing it. <laughs> hey, can we see this? I love Casey too. She's brilliant. I mean, How do we see that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, I'd never put it out anywhere. Cause um, it was one of those things where I made it and then I think got hired to 30 rock and then it just didn't go anywhere. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I can send it to you. <laughs> can you email it to me? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see it. And I, I might have to check with Casey uh, to see what the, uh, yeah. the rules are of that. <laughs> Casey, I'll allow. I'll text Casey and tell her I'm, I'm watching it. Uh, okay. Back to housewives. Uh, so you, you do believe Erica Jane knew all of this stuff. I don't know. I don't think she knew all of it. I, I, I think that, and nobody knows exactly what's going on in anyone's marriage ever. I, you know, I know that from firsthand experience I'm divorced, like nobody, nobody knows. And and you can put it up a front for a long time to even to your closest friends that saying everything's okay when things aren't what, where I get, you know, like I'm, I'm watching it in real time, the way that the housewives are learning all about it in real time. But like, I, what I find, um, uh, a red flag is her reaction to Sutton in next week's episode. Like the clip that we watch where she's just like hardcore going after Sutton. Right. Um, and then, and then where I am, and, and maybe she's um, just doing a great job because she's being so strong at like calming herself. But in the last episode, it's like when, when Garcelle said like, if Tom did those things, then F Tom. Can we cuss on this? On, yeah, on this? fuck Tom. Yeah. Yeah, fuck then fuck Tom. It's like the defense of Tom is like inexcusable. Like, like she she said, yes, that would be you're correct, but she says it so mm-hmm. without any emotion. And maybe that's because she's processing and she's dealing with it. So I I But I the emotions all coming out with Sutton and it feels like mis either misplaced right. or yeah. Or there's some other reason. You know, this past week on the show, Dorit called Garcelle a bully. I don't know if you saw this, but I did. I, do you feel what's what do you make of Garcelle? This really upset me because I don't feel like Garcelle ever housewives love to use the word bully. Like in the history of housewives, I feel like they call each other a bully. <laughs> it's really an overused bully term. And bowel renewals, bully and bowel renewals. <laughs> bowel renewals. <laughs> uh, but do you uh, do you think Garcelle is a bully at all? I don't. But I'm no curious. way. Yeah. No way. And um, I think like that that use of the word bully is just that extreme word that you can use to make your point that that says you hurt my feelings, which she had already said as well. That that Dorit had said that she hurt her, but. It, what I thought was really funny was just say it to me. And Garcelle's like, that is me saying it to you. <laughs> that, is, that is me like telling you that, yeah, I said it. And now you're saying I'm jabbing you. Uh, you know, it, she's not a bully at all. Yeah. Not at all. I think there was yeah. a layer of Dorit also wanting a storyline because nothing was really going on for Dorit this it season. Was with Dorit. No. Yeah. She's like, I Although I was something. really with her when she was, when they had the Sutton meeting with, uh, without Erica, like the way she was laying it out. Like I, I was like, yes, finally somebody is talking about the crime, mm-hmm. which is awful and terrible. And, and she was like kind of the first one that was saying it. <laughs> and I think they're all, I'm watching it and seeing these women sort of, process how the audience is going to react to everything because i feel like that's ultimately what they care most about is like they want to be on the right side of right. where the audience goes and i think with the erica jane it's so fascinating because i think they had assumed that the audience would be feeling so bad for erica because she's going through this force and everything and then when you add the victim angle into it with the orphans and widows i think they're all sort of reevaluating like oh shit Maybe yeah. they're not going to side with Yeah. That. And like Lisa Runa is just like walking on eggshells because she's like got so burned from last year with her going after Denise. So now, she, but it's like, Lisa, this isn't the time to worry about whether you know, this isn't somebody sleeping maybe with somebody else when they're married. This is, this is a much bigger thing. Watching her struggle has been interesting. Uh, but Kyle said it in the last episode where she's just like, I'm there for you. If you lose your money, I'm there for you. If you get divorced, I'm there for you. If you, you know, you're going through a hard time, but if it's taking knowingly taking money, like, what did you think when, when, um, Erica said, I just want to know where it, 
where the money went. That's to me where I was like, no, 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 no. You need to be like, like, it should be like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe. I hope Tom didn't do these things because it's so awful. What he, if he did. And, and, then, and, and she I spent the money. Yeah. Like we yeah. saw the money being spent. Like there's yeah. literally footage of you spending the money and Cut dragging. To the closet. Cut to the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how many times on this show they've, they've put a ring that she bought and said like $70,000 or, oh. or her, uh, the Mikey Minden budget to learn to pat the puss. And like, it was $30,000 for that or a month. And I feel like Erica, like we've seen where the money goes. Yeah. You've shown us stop acting like you don't know. Yeah. It's frustrating. Oh, I, Danny, I want to tell you something. I, I've never used a uh, ring light. Uh, this is the first time I've used a ring light and I'm just trying it out. Uh, How do you like to, it? On a Zoom. I, is it working for me? I you look know. great. You look oh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, because I, the, Amazon sent it to me for doing press this weekend for the movie. So, so I was like, I'm going to try it out with Danny. I don't know how I... You look beautiful. I got like seven lights on me. And sometimes I get distracted when I'm doing these Zooms because I'm like, man, it looks like I'm extra shiny right there. <laughs> like, I like, pull like a little blotter. And then I'm like, oh, I forgot to remove my Beanie Babies from behind <laughs> the frame. I should have done that. Oh, well. Uh what do you think is sort of like the high point of housewives? Like, is there a season, uh, uh, an event, a fight? Like, where do you land? Uh, for me, it's, it was Atlanta and it was this last season. And I thought the arc of Portia has been incredible from her season one to, um, to, to now her getting arrested and her, like her just growth and her commitment to the cause. I thought, I thought that season in particular was like Peabody award worthy and, um, and getting different perspectives on that. I thought that was really great. Cause uh, I mean, not great and what the injustices that are happening, but that um, it felt like she, she just like, she was very impressive and she was pretty amazing. Yeah. And then, and then with that, it's not the housewives, but I, I've, I was watching married to medicine at the same time of watching oh. the, you know, uh, um, Atlanta season. And it was just like that combination of just the fight and them being doctors in a time of COVID. I mean, it just was like uh, unbelievable television. Yeah. You know, I don't often talk about married to medicine on this show. I've had some of the women on as guests, but uh, I don't recap it. Do you hear there's drilling? I'm sorry. They're drilling above me. It's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't recap it like I do housewives, but this, you're right. This past season, married to medicine, there was a part at the reunion where, uh, one of the ER doctors, the husband, um, yeah. Eugene, Dr. Eugene, he was talking about his mask falling off and having to hold someone down in the ER and like the emotional toll of that. And it was some of the best television. And then on top of that, with married to medicine, you also get these great, like, uh, super quick witted confessionals and, it's yeah. just like the perfect mix. I, I, I thought last season and, and really, I believe married to medicine is the most consistent show on Bravo. Like they've never had a bad season. I agree. Yeah. 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 And it, it feels, it feels it because it is just very real and very of the moment. Like I was really taken with, with that story at the reunion and, and just um, his wife Toya, Toya. Right? Yeah. Or Toya was like, it just was different for us. Like my husband was an ER doctor. Like, and, and I, I found it interesting that all the other doctors were like, no, we all kind of went to the same thing. And he's like, no, we really didn't. <laughs> right, right, right. You know? Yeah. There's layers to this. Yeah. You know, one of you is a dentist, which I love. We love heavenly, but yeah, yeah it's love different. I love it. uh, okay. Kay, back to housewife or back to Cinderella. How did you get involved? What was your goal with making this movie? I know you talked a little bit about it, but uh, tell yeah. listeners about the movie. Well, I got um, uh, I got an email from my agent saying that James Corden wanted to talk to me about a something to do with Cinderella, and I am not a fairy tale princess kind of person, a gal. I'm more of an ET slash Annie <laughs> type of uh, uh, lady, and um, and so I was a big fan of James. So I took the meeting thinking nothing was going to come out of it, and then I but I just wanted to like meet him and you know. Um, exchange ideas and whatever. And so he pitched that he had this idea to do Cinderella with, <clears throat> you know, using contemporary songs. And then I could like rewrite the story, right. Or, or um, from my point of view or, or modernize it in a way. So, and, and I love that. 
well, you know, I'm a, uh, you know, having done pitch perfect, like I love taking, obviously taking covers of songs and, and, uh, you know, hearing them in a new way, like putting music in front of people that are younger who might not know that song, you know, and then, and then that song becomes really popular. So that notion of like using contemporary songs, it was like, oh, that, that instantly modernizes the story. Right. And, and, um, and for me, I just wanted to like give Cinderella, I like jumped at the chance to give Cinderella like a, to make her active and, and have her have a dream, you know, and, and be able not to only have that dream, but to actively go after that dream. And then, and then it got bigger from Cinderella where it was like, you know, all of them are, every character is kind of, is going to that same thing. It's like the whole town is not able to, it's so traditional that they're, everybody's kind of put into a box and it was sort of just a, my way to try to shake it up and, and just do it through jokes and songs. <laughs> and it was so great to get to see Billy Porter sing. You know, one of my favorite songs is a song he did off the first Wives Club soundtrack called Love is on the Way. And it, it's like, it plays during this really emotional moment in that movie. And Celine Dion like later covered it. But it, yeah, it's just, he's so wonderful in everything he does. It was exciting to see him pop up in this. Yeah, he's so special. There was no one else that could have played that part for him. I mean, I wrote, I wrote it for him. And then I actually had, um, because I didn't know if Billy would say yes, but I had, so I I had a Rhythmics um, Sweet Dreams in there because I was like, oh, if I don't get a really strong singer, that's like a song that, you know, like that part will just be really super funny. And then we'll have a, a little bit of a song that most people can do. And then when he, can, you know, signed on, and I knew for sure he was going to play it. Then it, we changed it to Sweet Dreams. And he's, or sorry, to um, Shining Star. And he's just so good. And when he came in for, uh, when we were doing pre-records and he came in to record the song, you know, he hits this like big end note, this big last note. And and he was like, I don't know, it's in the morning. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. And he goes into the booth and he just nails it on the first take. Whereas one of those things are like, I'm eating like an omelet and it's like, <laughs> you know, and it was just like, that's it. We got it. Um, oh, he's, he's just so talented. So, so talented. And I'm, I'm so happy for him. And, you know, he, I, I got to watch him watch the sequence, you know, because it's, he's in this isolated, I think he's only on screen for like 12 minutes or something, maybe, maybe less. So I got to watch him watch it when we were doing ADR and there were like tears shed and, you know, he, after you watched it, he was like, we're going to change the world. Cause like, you know, nobody has seen that role played in the way that he plays it. Right. And all the roles were really fun. I loved uh, mini driver and Pierce Brosnan that were like a, a wonderful surprise in the movie too. I didn't even know they were in it. Was there any, <laughs> was there any music that you wanted for the movie that you didn't get or wasn't? Yeah. There was, I mean, there's, there's always something right. But, um, but there's one song that I wanted so badly and she's so wonderful. And I can totally, I know why she said no to it, but I really wanted it after the ball for the um, stepsisters to sing Lord's Royals mm. uh, to have them like at breakfast the next morning and be like, and we'll never be, royal. you know, like, like that they didn't make it and they didn't get, you know, and then base and they were going to sing that acapella. And then, um, uh, the stepmother was going to be like, shut up <laughs> you know? and kind of like cut them off. Um, but I think that song had been used a lot and like Lord was so nice about it, but she was just like, I, I think it's been starting to be overused. So I didn't get it. But I, when I watched the final, when I was done with the movie, the one thing I said to my friend, Irene Marquette, who uh, was associate producer on the movie, I was like, Oh man, I really wish we could have had that song. Um, I- you yeah. know, I, I, I love the Janet popping up when I watched it. I didn't even know you guys were doing like contemporary music in it because it, I just didn't know that. And I was so excited when I started to hear these familiar songs. And I think it adds an element to the movie where I, it's just fun. It's just fun to hear some of those songs. Um, Camilla plays Ella in the movie, Cinderella Ella. And mm-hmm. I'm endlessly fascinated by the relationship with Sean Mendes. Was he popping up on set? Like, did you want, did you get a first hand experience? What's that like? Yes, I uh, he, he he did come to set a couple of times. I mean, we uh, pre pre COVID, 
Um, cause we were, I shot about four weeks of the movie, uh, and then we shut down and then five months later, almost to the day we I shot the last seven weeks of the movie. Um, uh, but you know, what was really great is we did, uh, we did some pre-records at, at Abbey road, uh, studios in, uh, London and Sean came to pick up Camila from that pre-record and like both like Sean, like lost his mind. He loved it. <laughs> like to be at Abbey Road Studios or whatever. Um, and so that was like really fun to see. And I think they're so ridiculously cute together. And I uh, like, I just like looking at both of them. I think they're just really there for each other. And I mean, it's been a couple of years that they've been together now. So it's not like, and they're so young and yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. so, there's so much scrutiny on, on, on them individually. And then as a couple, but I love them and I think they're beautiful and deeply in love with each other. And Okay. What's next? Is there going to be a pitch perfect four? I know there's always rumors about that. Are you going to, are you writing? Did you write one? Is this like a secret thing? Are you going to do um, one? No. I mean, if, if they do a pitch perfect four, uh, I, I won't be a part of You're it. You're done. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next for you? I, when I, I I'm going to interrupt you. I didn't. You didn't even. I didn't give you the chance to answer. But um, what I love so much about the through line of your work is it's so accessible to people, and I think you do such a a great job of making things that everyone can enjoy. If you look at the Pitch Perfect movies, you know I could sit down with my niece and and we can both equally like it. And I think that's what's going to be special that people find about the new Cinderella too. But uh, what do you want to do next? Yeah. I mean, I hope just to address the first part of that is like what I have found in the things I do is that people are often skeptical. Like blockers was the same way blockers. Like they were like, Oh, it's just a raunchy rated R comedy. And, and then everything like all the um, commercials and trailers and stuff like would, would also support that notion. And then they watch the movie and then they get surprised at like how much hearts in it, or it's actually quite sweet or, it, you know, has something to say. And um, so as I look to do like whatever's next, like I have like a, a handful of things I'm working on, but it's, it's to, I don't know, to challenge myself to like, um, there's so much content out there that you, you really have to have something to say and still be entertaining. And, um, you know, whether that's on the comedy side, I, I, there's a couple of things I really like on the drama side. Um, so that might be something new that I, that I, try to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just, I'm just trying to find the, the, the right thing that makes sense and, and has something, you know, to say, and, and hopefully kind of keep trying to surprise people. Well, and the, the humor and all of your stuff too, sort of comes out of nowhere a little bit, you know, I, there's just so many little <laughs> moments in Cinderella that I thought were super funny that were unexpected. And, and obviously I think that's a part of the 30 rock legacy. I know that's where your first sort of uh, writing was, uh, you know, that we've seen and, and there's just so many surprising jokes in it. Okay. I know I got to let you go. I ask everyone uh, these two, these next two questions, your favorite Mariah Carey song. And then who would you choose for sexiest man alive? If you were choosing for people magazine. Uh, okay. So uh, my favorite Mariah Carey song is um, you'll always be my baby. baby. So good. And I would sing that to my daughter when she was a baby and, and still kind of, and still sing it to her today. Um, not in a romantic kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mariah and, does that song on stage to her kids. Now she like sings that uh, to her kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, and then uh, who would I pick for a sexiest man? Alive? Yeah. I mean, uh, dude from Bridgerton. Oh yeah. 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 You, you know, also, He's like, great. He's funny. He's like, uh, did you watch him host SNL? I did. Yeah. 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 He was great. I mean, I was like, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. I, when I was rewatching oh, blockers you and you're like, <laughs> 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 like, I think it's episode six. Uh, <laughs> it's just uh, a lot of him. When I was watching Blockers, though, I find John Cena so sexy. Like, you do. I, yeah, I do. I, I mean, obviously, he's got the muscles and everything, but I like his personality is sexy to me. He's got like sort of a quirky sense of humor or something. I don't know. Yeah, he's the best, man. He's great. 
Hey, what a delight to get to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking the time. This was truly a pleasure. I want to encourage everyone to check out Blockers immediately when we're done mm-hmm. here. And then go watch uh, Cinderella on Amazon September 3rd. Uh, it's, I think, sit down with the family and everyone's going to really enjoy it. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you.